Welcome back to our channel. In our last video, we headed uh, southbound through Myrtle Beach and then Charleston, South Carolina, hung out at some awesome anchorages. Then we headed further south through Georgia, uh, ended up visiting St. Augustine for a couple of nights, and then we headed off uh, further south through Ponte Vedra, Ponte Vedra on our way to Daytona. In this video, we are in St. Augustine for the holidays, and where we also take the opportunity to learn and do some fly fishing. Then we're back to the boat in Daytona to catch up on some maintenance. Uh, we move south to Stewart, uh, where we provision, and we also get some waxing jobs done, new air conditioning unit, and some uh, maintenance before we head to the Bahamas. Have you ever dreamed of selling it all and cruising into the sunset? Well, that's exactly what we did. It's no fun going it alone though, so why don't you join us for the ride? So the brand of our boat is a PDQ, and Rumline Yacht Sales sponsors an owner's gathering every year in January, and that's where we met uh, a lot of the owners last year and the year before, and some of them have become our close friends. One of the couples that we met at the first owner's gathering was John and Sally. Uh, Sally particularly because she was bartending at the event. But uh, here's a good picture I have of John. Wait a minute. I don't know how that got in there, but here is an accurate picture of John. John's boat is named Traveler, and he's quite the adventurer and explorer, consummate fisherman, and definitely pulls me out of my comfort zone now and then, and that's what I really like about him. What are we going to do with this fish? I want to cook it the way uh, they did, like we talked about in Mexico. Cool. Fry that little guy whole. Yep. Nice. Descale it and fry it whole. What are we making? Okay, so there's a little grouper, snack, scored it, just gutted it, scaled it, scored it. Put some salt and pepper, some lime juice. And we're doing, we're cooking, this is healthy. Absolutely. You can't get much healthier than fried fish. No. <laughs> That's the bomb. John is a weight Nazi on his boat. He doesn't carry anything extra, but his choice of dinghies is the Taka Cat, which is a kind of a unique twin hold catamaran type of dinghy. Uh, it only weighs about 50 pounds and he's got an electric engine on it so he's very very stealthy on his way to catch fish. I think that's why he does slightly better than me. Enough about John, let's talk about a more pleasant subject, Sally. Sally's a lot of fun. She's an okay pickleball player but she is an amazing cook. Oh and did I say she was a grandmother of eight? Thankfully, her and Lori get along great, so we spend a lot of time with them. So, why am I mentioning all this? Because they invited us up to their home in St. Augustine to spend the holidays with them. And while in St. Augustine, we got to tour the Knights of Lights exhibit that they have every year in the center of town. John and Sally have a beautiful place just off the intercoastal waterway in sort of a tidal marshy area full of wildlife. And they also invited our other boating friends Tim and Ellen along for Thanksgiving and Tim is an amazing fly fisherman. 
With John's expert guidance, he timed the tide right and began to fish for redfish off of John's dock. You need me to hold something? Yeah, I want to hold No, you bring it in. <laughs> I'll let you hold. On his second cast, Tim hooked a nice redfish, probably about, I don't know, eight pounds. And uh, he had given me the rod to reel it in to show me the thrill of catching something on a fly rod. They had to twist my arm for this one. And to celebrate our great catch, and because it was Thanksgiving morning, we had to start off with breakfast shots made by Lori. If you closed your eyes while doing the shot, you would think you were eating pancakes, syrup, and then bacon. Needless to say, we had a great dinner, and John fed pancake too much turkey. This was the result. Enough of that sleeping in, though. We need to get back to some boat maintenance. So we're in the tiny generator compartment in the front of the boat, and um, in the port port bow. Um, and I was changing the oil, uh, getting ready to go to the Bahamas, and that all worked well, but I noticed that on top of the engine there, you see a lot of dust, a lot of black dust. So I looked, and I looked at this alternator belt. It's got a ton of play in it, which isn't good. So we'll take it off and inspect it. Just gotta loosen this bolt here, and it slides up. We'll take it off and take a look at it. My guess is it's okay, but it uh, definitely needs to be tightened. There shouldn't be all this play at all. So that'll ruin your belt at the wrong time. So we'll take a look at that. So I've loosened this bolt here. It's the pivot bolt. And then this top bolt here. And you can see this moves now and I can swing it to the left and remove this belt. So it's pretty easy to do just by loosening those two bolts. Sometimes you only have to loosen this top one, the adjuster bolt. Um, but I had to loosen both on this one. So here's the belt. It's got teeth on the inside, so it's a high quality belt. It uh, doesn't look like there's any sort of wear and tear on it, so I'll just put it back on and retighten it. But again, uh, periodically, now check out your engines, check out your generator, look for signs of wear because it'll creep up on you. So back to the generator here. I tightened it and I'm still not happy with all this play. And you tighten it by swinging the alternator to the right here. And it swings along this axis, this bolt here. But we're right at the very end of this here, so we can't tighten it anymore. We can't swing it the alternator to the right anymore and there's still too much play so I'm going to take it off and uh, see what's going on so I ended up taking the old belt off here though it's still in good shape I bought uh, and this is from Napa so it's an aftermarket belt that somebody had put on at some point in time it's too long and that's why we're having a problem down at the pulley here, the alternator, not being able to adjust it because it was hitting the end here. Well, I bought an OEM belt, which was only a little bit more than the Napa belt. And it is, as you can see, now I've got it nice and tight, the way it should be, about 3 16th play. And um, it uh, has plenty of room to adjust, as you can see here. Before, we were way down here because the belt was so long, the pulley was pivoting way over now it's in a good place so now it's nice and tight we shouldn't get any issues um, with the belt disintegrating anymore and as I said before all this belt dust now I can clean this up off of here and uh, we should be all set So provisioning for the Bahamas, this is what $800 in groceries looks like. Just a little bit of alcohol, a couple bottles of wine, but 
Got meats here and snacks and everything. 800 bucks. Whew. It's the mess that is provisioning. Leaving Halifax in Daytona on a beautiful morning. 6.45 a.m. Headed to Melbourne tonight and then to uh, Stewart, Palm City tomorrow. Our friends and fellow PDQ owners, Brian and Don, captured our departure from Halifax from their condominium. And this is why I think mornings are the best times of the day. So heading south on the intercoastal past Daytona, we've seen this house a couple of times now. It's uh, very big, uh, certainly unique, and uh, sometimes looks to me like a Dr. Seuss house. Can't tell where the sky meets the water today. Vehicle assembly building ahead, southbound towards Titusville. Heading through Hallover Canal near NASA. Ton of manatees, so we gotta go super slow. This passage had a little bit of a pucker factor. Uh, there were some workers uh, under the bridge and a couple cranes on each side, and they left just a little narrow passage for boats. Lori and I had just been remarking on how we hadn't seen any dolphins uh, on the east coast in the intercoastal waterway in Florida. And then this happened. This was actually a pretty good sized pod and there were about four or five dolphins on each side of the boat. For me, this never gets old. Our next stop was to visit some friends of ours at a place that us PDQ owners call Camp Carroll. The PDQ 34 across the way is Onward and Traveler with its new striping and Heron next to it. Two drifters, and here is island time, getting the holes wet sanded and waxed, and then down here is Jubilani, followed by, uh, what is it, sleigh ride, 41, kind of from the side profile. This sleigh ride with beautiful powder blue holes that have been repainted. Excellent shape. It's under contract right now. Beautiful boat. Hey guys. These guys did an absolutely fantastic job and Island Time looked brand new again. This is what your home, should I say your boat looks like when you're working on it. We're getting new rear air conditioning and James Power, the deity, is here and he's fixing uh, 
one of our storage pans there that had a crack in it. It's a little bit bilge water was getting in. So we've got the bathroom up. We've got that up. We've got the engine uncovered. Stuff all over. It's a mess. But we've got the right man for the job. The air conditioning unit is a tight fit, but squeezes into a little compartment behind your head in, uh, that is your physical head, not the bathroom head, in uh, both uh, cabins. Besides the wet sanding and waxing and the air conditioning replacement, here's a list of all of the engine maintenance things we did before we left for the Bahamas. So, boat's ready to go, we're all provisioned up, and we'll be heading to Bahamas for the winter of 2024.